there are a lot of providers out there for CubeSats for parts and even some payloads and such. One such of these is CubeSat Shop, and there are others out there. But I just wanted to kind of get you, give you an idea as to what it would be like building a more or less off-the-shelf CubeSat. So we'll start out with a kit, and we're going to work on a 1U SAT. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So we can have different types of processors. We can have the structure that comes with it. You can see here. And uh, this is a processor. Now, the processor has the ability to charge a satellite and do basic commanding. This is just a, a basic computer for general purpose stuff of the satellite. And you can program it on the ground as well. You can see it's been delivered to a number of people and used in a whole bunch of stuff. So, awesome. Now, let's keep going through some of the other systems. Um, let's look at the communication system next. So there are a number of different radios here. Now, this is, I'm going to assume that this is like a university type project. And as university, it's non-commercial, which means we can use the amateur radio frequencies. If you're non-commercial in nature, I highly recommend you use the amateur radio frequencies because they're a lot cheaper and just easier to get licenses for and, and so on and so forth. So we can take a look here at different things, um, different bands. UHF and VHF are probably the easiest and the cheapest to work with, but if you need a higher data rate, you can look into the S band. So we'll just look at some of these. So this looks like it'll fit in a CubeSat pretty easily. That's good. You can look at the performance. You can see what bands it's operating on. How much power? 23 dBm. That's not a whole lot of power to be talking to something that's thousands of miles away, but it's a clear line of sight, so it's entirely possible to have a setup that'll do that. So you can see the data rate, 1200 BPS. You can select the data rates and, and you can see what kind of sensitivity it has. It looks like the commanding is done on the UHF and the VHF. It's done is the uh, transmitting. So you'll have to worry about Doppler shift and a few other of these types of things while you're at it. But that's totally reasonable. Now, note the modulation here. You want to make sure that you have a radio that can do that. But okay, fine, we could do this. Now, next, let's look at an antenna. So there are a couple of different designs that we could do. You can do a deployable antenna, dipole antenna. This would be the simplest thing. A helos antenna, this has to be relatively carefully pointed towards Earth. So if you have the ability to point very carefully, then this might be worth it. But otherwise, you might want to go with something like this. The, the Helios design will have a pretty tame uh, output. So let's look at this. This looks like it's a little bit big to fit on a 1U, up to 55 centimeters in length, so that will be quite a bit longer. It can be mounted on all CubeSat structures. So it looks like this antenna is bendable and can just bend around enough times until you're able to completely deploy it. So that's good. We could buy one of these. Now, this is just an antenna. You can make a dipole antenna for a lot cheaper than this if you wanted to do that. But if you don't want to do that, then that's an option. Okay, so what else do we need for this? Let's look at power. Solar panel. So we have these panels that we can get. You can get deployable panels, but remember if you have deployable panels, then you have to be able to point them at the sun, which means you have to have a lot more precise pointing than you would otherwise. Or you can get a number of these and just stick them on all of the sides of the satellite. So let's look at, let's look at the deployable panels here. So it says a uh, 1U CubeSat to pack as much power as a full 3U mission. Okay. So we could choose some kind of a design. 
here you know you can get the more expensive cells in order to have more power you can do the lower ones for whatever whatever you want okay that's good um so if you want to go on the cheap you'll get something like this and get four sets of these one or four to six sets of these one for each panel at six if you want to include everything if they're pointed at the sun they're not going to be perfectly accurate so okay but these are hard mounted onto the sides of the satellite if you have them mounted on every side you'll have at least the area of these two cells getting you power which it looks like this will do a couple of watts of power according to the the specs here it looks like they even have a magnetometer which is fantastic you can get some and temperature settings both of which are, are very useful awesome okay so what else do we need well let's look at the other options here really quick we let's start with payloads camera and payload here we go so most of the payloads that they have will be cameras because that's the easiest thing in here all of these cameras are large it looks like this thing you could fit into a standard cubesat very expensive the payloads for amateur satellites are the most important thing and they can be quite expensive as well so you want to be able to choose those very carefully okay let's look at actuators you can buy some reaction wheels if you want to have more accurate control you can have a magnet torquer so that you can uh, use magnet torquers to position your satellite with the magnet torquers you want to position them at right angles uh, preferably in all three axes so this is two of the three axes which is good so, and with uh, uh, wheels, you want to do the same thing with reaction wheels. So, okay, we got some pretty decent options. That's good. But uh, we're not really caring that much about our attitude because we have fixed on solar on panels and just dipoles for the, the antenna. We should be okay. Okay, attitude sensor. If you're putting a camera you'll want to have a better uh, attitude control than this. And same thing with the sensors. You can see some of the kinds of stuff. This is like a star tracker. You have sun sensors. You have, I think, earth sensors in here. And, oh, this is inertial measurement units. What else we got? GPS receiver, even. So you can have all of these. Okay, that's nice. Uh, command and data handling. We already had the board that will do this, but that's okay. We can look into having another one if we need it. We have a launch adapter. This is probably less important because when you launch a CubeSat, often the you'll be contracting out with another party, but uh, this could be important. You notice they satellite goes in the can and is released so that's that's good okay what else we got you got propulsion you can have little tiny tiny thrusters that'll take one of your solar panels away but if you have deployable panels this might work if you're in a low enough orbit you do not need to have propulsion if you're in a higher orbit then at least in the united states you're required to have enough propulsion to deorbit your spacecraft within 25 years if you're below about 10, about 600 kilometers, then it doesn't make much of a difference because you'll be re-entering within 10 years anyway, or within 25 years anyways. Okay, what else do we got? Oh, yes, the ground station. Let's take a look at these. Now, these are expensive. You can build your own ground station for considerably less than this especially if you're looking at the amateur satellite station you can look at some of the the systems they have and they'll be quite a bit less than this but this is an option if you just want something that'll just work and that's all i really have for now next time we'll keep covering more topics along these lines but i thought you'd like to see 
at least at a very, very high level, how you might go about actually purchasing the parts to build the satellite. And you're going to have to find the room to put all of these in. You might have to drill some holes and do this kind of stuff, but it can be done. And uh, this is done. This has been done by at least one set of high school uh, students and probably some others as well. Let me know whatever questions, comments you guys have about space exploration, satellites, or whatever else in general. And until next time, keep on tracking.